Hello everybody, it's DJ here with another Monday Motivation. I hope your week has started out great. I want to ask you a question and I want you to think really long and hard about it. And that is, are we revering God and treating Him as holy like we should? A few weeks back, I talked about this whole movement about deconstruction, and I'm not going to get into that again, but one of the things that I've thought about since then has been, why does that even happen? And I think in part, it's because we as a society, and and, and I think this is the world around, are not holding God as holy as we should, if at all. I believe that there's some serious, serious things that we need to consider when we're thinking about treating God as holy. I think even in our worship services, I think in how we go about our day, we don't see God so much in the holiness that he should be given, but we see him more like a pal or maybe like a a grandfather figure or a father figure or As I've said before in other Monday motivations, we sometimes treat him like an ATM machine and thinking that we can just go talk to him and he gives us what we want and we go about our business and don't think any more about God. Well, today I want to talk about that. The philosopher Voltaire said, in the beginning God created man in his own image and ever since man has been trying to return the favor. I kind of think that he's right and that we don't sit back and treat God in the holiness that he is. We don't look at him with the holiness that is God. And that's important in our walk as Christians, as true Bible-believing, God-fearing Christians, you treat God as holy. And, and it's really, really important for us to understand that. So, so let's talk about this biblical foundation for, for God's holiness. The scriptures are abounding and I don't have enough time on this Monday motivation to go through all of them but there's a few of them that really stand out with the first one being Leviticus 19 verse 2 which says be holy because I the Lord your God am holy God declares himself holy right and then there's first Peter 1 verse 16 that says be holy for I am holy and then there's Isaiah 55 8 through 9 that says for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways declares the Lord God's on a totally different plane than we are God is something completely different and God is so different from us while we're made in his image we have to be very very careful that we're not making God in our image see that doesn't work and there is a a certain idolatry that I would even say that goes along this idolatry maybe of the mind if we start putting God down on our level. And so it's really important for us to make sure that we are treating God completely, fully, 110% and beyond holy, sacred, set apart. So how can we go about really changing how we revere God? And I've got some tips for you that I think would be really good. So let's go with number one. Number one is renew your mind daily. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's so important that we renew our mind daily. Now, you may be sitting there saying, well, how do we go about renewing our mind? You've got to surrender your thoughts over to God. Make time in the day, starting your day, the very first part of the day, with spending time with God, spend time in God's Word, spend time talking to God and reflect on His Word. That is important for me to start my day that way, knowing that God is holy. That's going to lead me on to the rest of the day. And then what sort of piggybacks on that is number two, which is to guard your speech and your conduct. In Ephesians 4 verse 29, it says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up. You cannot turn on the television these days and not find anything on there that it doesn't necessarily have a lot of unwholesome talk coming out of it. And when we start, the devil's using all of that to desensitize us and we gotta be careful with that. So 
it, it seeps into our own speech and our own language and our own dialogue and conversations that we have and we don't even know that we're doing it. And so we've got to be extra careful that we are guarding our tongues and guarding our speech and our conduct. The one way that you can think about this and to check yourself is to always recognize that God can see and hear everything. God is always present. And so think like that. Sit there and ask yourself the question of, is, is this going to reflect the holiness of God? And think before you react. As my dad would often tell me, you need to put your brain in gear before you put your mouth in motion. And then I think you've got to prioritize worship in spirit and in truth. That is so important. It says in John 4, 24, God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. I often sit back and think sometimes when I'm in worship, boy, what would happen if God manifested himself in, in some sort of human form or in some sort of way and he just comes into the auditorium? From what I see in the scriptures, the the posture of, of individuals who come into the presence of God often fall flat on their face. That's the level of holiness of being in the presence of God. We oftentimes go into our worship services thinking that we're supposed to get something out of it, as if we are the the spectators and, and God's the the object of what we're spectating. And that's that's backwards. We are there to worship and to uphold and praise God in all of His holiness. So many people come just checking a box off in worship. That is not treating God with holiness. Number four, I would say, is pursue holiness in your relationship. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, it says, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. One of the things you got to ask, if you're, if you're on the path of wanting to uphold God as holy, Look at your relationships. If the people you're around all the time are people who are bringing you down and they're people who are not building up you or anyone else around them, then you gotta you need to really kind of think second guess your friends. Find people and that you can pray for or people who will pray for you, people that you can encourage and they can encourage you. Find people who are on the same path as you trying to find and uphold the holiness of God in your life every single day and that they can challenge you and that you can challenge them. Number five would be we have to stand firm against the world's influences. James 4 verse 4. James is one of those books and boy you read James it'll, he, he hits you between the eyes every single time and James says in verse 4 he says friendship with the world means enmity against God. In this world and this that we live in right now it is difficult really to be a a true Christian and it's going to be a challenge uh, I think people become Christians and they think that once they are baptized and they have been forgiven of their sins that they're just good to go and they don't have to do anything else that is so wrong you have to be willing to make changes the world's not gonna like you for that I mean they didn't like what Jesus said, and look what they did to him. You need to reject, reject all of the practices that the world throws at you and all the things that the world says, hey, this is okay. Look at the behaviors of what you watch on TV, the music that you listen to. I've got to do this too. you got to look at it and say, is it in conflict with God's holiness? And avoid those situations that might cause you to be tempted. Uh, I remember Phil Sanders, a, a, a preacher that that we had at Conquer Road at one point he I remember one time he told me he said you can't go through a mud hole and not get muddy there's so much mud holes in on in media and social media and on TV and on radio and there's so many mud holes there that we are getting muddy and we better watch out which leads me to number six the last one is really commit to obedience. First Samuel 15 verse 22 says, to obey is better than sacrifice. And that's what God wants. Obedience to God is one of the ways that we sit back and say, you are holy. I want to follow you. You are holy. Making that commitment to follow God's commands no matter what. And when it's counter to culture and when it's, uh, when it's difficult, you may lose friends. What's better to uphold and have God say in the end, well done, my good and faithful servant, or to sit there and say, well, you know, Lord, I loved my friends more. We're going to have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. The, the world is trying to bring God down to human standards. 
if they can't knock God's word out by trying to say that it is some fairy tale book or some ancient book that doesn't amount to anything, they're going to try to knock you down. They're going to try to get you to bring God down to human standards. And I'm telling you, God is so far above us. God is so much higher. He is so holy and he is sacred and everything, his word is sacred. Don't uh, you know, don't don't go throwing your Bibles around like they're just another book. It's the holy word of God. Treat it like that. When we pray to God, remember we're talking to our creator and we're not talking to another created being. We're talking to our holy father. And so we need to treat him as such. We need to treat him with more reverence than we have. And we've lost that a little bit. Or maybe we've lost it a lot. Let me ask you this. We're living lives in this world. Are we standing out? Because if you're living holy, a holy life, revering a holy God, you're going to stand out. Something different about you. And that's a testament to, to a revering God as being holy. As you go through every single day, starting today, sit back and think about whether or not you are treating God as holy. Are we treating God as holy and revering Him in our worship services? Because I know a lot of times I'm not. We've got to get back to revering God as the holy being that He is, our holy creator, our holy God, our holy master. Because one day, when we get to heaven, one of the things that we're going to see is a holy God. We're going to give an account for how we treated his word, how we treated the commands that he gave. So this week, think, take stock in how you are handling things when it comes to treating God as holy. Really let that get into your mind and really let it sink in. And I think that there will be so much reward in it. And we will look at the scriptures, we'll look at our worship, we'll look at our lives much, much di more differently when we do it through the lens of seeing God as holy. We got a loving, awesome, amazing, holy God who loves us and wants us to see him as he is, which is a magnificent creator and a holy, holy, holy. Hey, remember our holy God loves you and I do too.